Hai, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We continue the lecture uh, on digestive system part 2. Now we go into stages of food processing. Okay, so there are five stages in food processing. We start with ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation, and elimination. So what is ingestion? Ingestion is the act of eating. Digestion is the process of breaking food mechanically and chemically into small molecules. So this mechanical digestion, it begins in your mouth with chewing activity. And when it say chemically, uh, chemical digestion, it refers to the action of the uh, enzymes and also salivary uh, glands to turn the food particle into small molecules. Okay, absorption. Absorption is the movement of digested food molecules through the wall of uh, the intestine into the bloodstream or the lymphatic system. And assimilation is the uptake of nutrient into cells and building up into more complex substances. So this assimilation is actually the absorption and digestion of food or nutrients by the body or any biological system. So that is the assimilation, the absorption of the nutrients. So normally this process happens in the small intestine. And the elimination is actually the complete removal of the unwanted material. Okay, so all the undigested materials such as fiber, okay, they will pass out from the digestive tract via the anus in the form of feces. So let's go through the human digestive system. In human digestive system, it consists of two parts. The first is alimentary canal. We also call this as digestive tract or gastrointestinal tract. And the second is the accessory glands or accessory digestive organ. So alimentary canal consists of mouth, the pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine and large intestine. Meanwhile, the accessory organ or accessory glands consists of salivary glands, the pancreas, the liver and the gallbladder. So these are the image of the alimentary canal and uh, in our digestive system. So this is the oesophagus where the peristalsis uh, process happen in the oesophagus and then this is our stomach, the small intestine and the last will be large intestine and all the feces they will pass through the rectum and then eliminated by the anus. Oral cavity. So when the word say oral, it means inside the mouth. So in mouth, we also call the oral. So what happened inside your mouth during digestion? So our mouth will receive food and breaks up the food from large organic molecules into small organic molecules or in turn the food into small particles. So what happened to the food is actually the food is changed mechanically by beating and chewing process. So when you, you chew the food, the food is actually turned from large molecule to small molecule. Why? Because this process will help the digestion to be happen properly. And then inside your mouth there are there is sorry there are salivary glands. So this salivary glands is actually function to produce your saliva. Why we need the saliva? Because this saliva has enzymes and also other material that can help the digestion. So the release of saliva into the mouth will moisten the food. So inside the saliva there are amylase enzyme 
that will initiate the glucose breakdown. So when we eat food that is rich in carbohydrate or starch, so the food will be started to be digested in the mouth by salivary amylase. So this is happen inside your oral cavity. The first is the activity by your teeth by chewing food into smaller particles that are exposed to salivary amylase. In saliva, besides of having amylase enzyme to help in digest the carbohydrate, saliva also possess buffer capacity. So, so this saliva is actually uh, they maintain or they they keep your uh, oral cavity in the pH of 6.2 to 7.6 which is normally the average pH is normally 6.7 which is near to neutrality near to neutral neutral is 7 pH 7 so why this saliva uh, keep your mouth pH near to neutral to prevent the tooth decay which is to neutralize the acid and also it has the antibacterial agents so that any food that enter our mouth we have the first protection which is our saliva which contain the antibacterial agents okay so the saliva instead of uh, having the amylase property to digest the carbohydrate it also possess the buffer capacity and the last is tongue so what is the function of our tongue in digestive system? So this tongue will, will actually manipulate the food. Okay, When we eat the food, the food will be torn into small particles. And the tongue will help to form the food that we eat into a ball. So this ball we call bolus. Okay, another part you must know is about mucin. So this mucin also contained in your salivary uh, gland, in your saliva, okay? So what made the mucin? So this mucin composed of uh, carbohydrate and protein. That is why it is called glycoprotein component. Glyco from the word glyco means carbohydrate. Protein means protein. So mucin made up of carbohydrate and protein so it is a carbohydrate protein complex so this mucin can be found in saliva so what are the functions of the mucin the first one to protect the uh the lining of the mouth from abrasion what is abrasion abrasion is cut or wound or any tear so it will protect the lining of your mouth from any cut and then the second a function is to lubricate the food for easier swallowing so that is the functions of the mucin so the character of the mucin is slippery so that all the food that we eat is keep moistened to help the process of swallowing and also the digest digestion process so these are the chemical structure of the salivary mucin now we go into epiglottis so this epiglottis right here is a flap of cartilage, okay? So do you know what is cartilage? Cartilage is not a bone, okay? But it is an elastic tissue, okay? It is elastic tissue like a rubber padding. So this um, epiglottis will prevent any food from entering your trachea. So when we eat, when the process of eating happen, this um, epiglottis will shut off your glottis so that no food will enter the trachea. Since the trachea and the uh, osophagus is uh, beside to each other, so it is uh, very uh, necessary for this to uh, for this epiglottis to act properly during the uh, eating process. Okay, now this is the oesophagus. Oesophagus is the tract where the food in a bolus form, okay, from the pharynx. This is the pharynx, okay, will move down to the stomach by the process of peristalsis. So, I used to remember what is peristalsis. Peristalsis is the movement of the muscle. 
so the, the movement of the food from your oesophagus to the stomach is in the form of muscle contraction of the oesophagus. This process we call as peristalsis. Okay, elementary canal wall. So this is your um, your elementary canal and the wall of the canal. Okay, if you can see here, this is the lumen. Okay, the lumen is the opening of the uh, tract. Okay, it consists of uh, four basic tissue. Okay, four basic tissue layers. The innermost part is the mucosa. Okay, the mucosa and the functions as absorptive and secretory. And it follows by the submucosa. Okay, this is submucosa where the uh, where the element or the molecule from the mucosa is picked up by the submucosa. Uh, by the uh, blood vessel of the submucosa. So all the blood vessel from the submucosa will absorb any nutrients from the mucosa and then it followed by the muscularis externa muscularis externa refer to the muscle okay this muscle so this muscle consists of two types of muscle circular and longitudinal muscle and then the outermost layer is the serosa so this is the serosa is the protective layer and also act as the secretary to produce ser uh, serum uh, which is to lubricate the uh, canal okay so in here we also uh, see mine trick plexus so what is the mine trick plexus so this mine trick plexus is actually the major nerve supply the uh, digestive tract okay so this is nerve so this is the major nerve okay and then we have also mesentery. Okay, mesentery is actually a membrane. Okay, a membrane that holds the small intestine so that our small intestine is attached to its place. So, uh, there is no bone or any uh, cartilage that can hold the small intestine at its place. So, this mesentery will help to place the small intestine so that the, the small intestine is uh, still in its place so that is the mesentery okay so this I have explained previously there are four basic tissues layer that form the elementary canal wall mucosa the innermost layer followed by submucosa which absorb the molecule of mucosa pick up by the blood vessel of submucosa and we have the muscle layer so all this muscle will do the contraction and uh, induce the peristaltic movement and the outermost layer is the rosa okay so that's all for digestive part two we continue in part three later thank you